Hey guys, welcome to this video. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about and showing you, more importantly, my seed hauls for my 2022 gardens. So this is gonna be super fun. I am getting my seeds from three different places this year, plus leftovers from last year. And so let's just get right into it. If you are new, my name is Mallory and I am Black Rifle Homestead, or my household is Black Rifle Homestead. That is a pretty new change. And so on this channel, we focus on homesteading as a military family and giving you tips, bringing you along with the journey. Even if you're not in the military, maybe you want a homestead, but you don't have that ideal like 20 plus acres of land with farm animals and all of that, you can still homestead. So I invite you to hit the subscribe button down below so that you don't miss any more of these homesteading type videos. All right, so let's just get right into the seed haul. All right, everyone. So first stop for buying seeds actually is going to be Dollar Tree. So I was out running errands. I had to go to our local grocery store called Hy-Vee. And then now we're at Dollar Tree. Hi. And so I know that Dollar Tree does carry seeds. And so I want to see what they have and see if there's anything that I would like because things are just a dollar. So let's go see. We haven't been to the Dollar Tree in a while. I got Max this little bar at Hy-Vee. Right. So here is Dollar Tree's garden area. We have some little pots here. Oh, these will be great for like potting, potting up. Stuff. And then there's these things. Garden beds. Oh, a little soaker hose for a dollar. That's cute. Look, and they have tools. Not, oh, look, here's their seats. Oh, look. What is this? Gardening made easy. Summer bouquet. Well, that's cool. And then they have the same like this. Can grow up to 10. What in the world? Okay, so here's their seed collection. Wow, they do have a lot, and each one's only a dollar. It's like a tomato. Wait, four for a dollar? Are you kidding me? 100% non-GMO. Oh, this is Roma. I did want Roma. Okay, well, I'm gonna look for this. What do you guys think? What would you get here? That was a successful shopping trip into Dollar Tree. So if you have not gone to your local Dollar Tree to check out their seeds, I encourage you to do that before they sell out. Because um, what I've found, like when there's seasonal items that are really hot, um, they'll go fast. So even if you're not ready to plant your garden yet, this is the time to be buying your seeds. And so that's what I'm doing. Um, so I got a few other things other than just um, seeds. I got. I got like a Valentine's Day project for Max to make Valentine's for the grandparents. Um, I also got a couple of these packets. They're plant labels. Ten for a dollar. Well, I lied. It's actually everything that used to be a dollar, at least the stuff that I bought, is a dollar twenty-five now. So it really should be called the dollar twenty-five tree. Dollar tree. The dollar twenty-five tree. Whatever. But anyway, ten for a dollar twenty-five. So I got 20 of them and these will be great for writing. Like I'm so bad at labeling my plants, like when they're in the garden beds. So I really want to get better at that this year so that I know exactly what's, what's what. Um, I also got a couple of plastic containers to organize my seed packets in. And then I got, I think I got 12 seeds. Yeah, or no maybe 16. Anyway, let me show you what I got. Some of their seeds actually are heirloom, which is my favorite because then you can collect seeds and it's super cool. Like heirlooms, some of them um, are like, if you're looking in seed catalogs, it'll sometimes tell you the history of the seed. And sometimes it'll say like dating back to the civil war or the 1800s or 1906 or whatever. And so that's really, really cool that we can plant seeds today that were used like back in the civil war times. That's just super neat. Anyway, so some of these seeds are stuff that I already had on my list. And so I'll just use these seeds as like, I don't have to buy them from like an actual seed catalog, but some of them are ones that I, that were on my like secondary list and I, I slash them just to save money. 
but I decided to get them here just because they're so like it's 25 cents a pack. Early summer crooked neck or crook neck. That's an heirloom. And some of these are flowers too. So I got I've wanted to plant zinnias and I know that Becky over at Acre Homestead had really good uh, a good uh, crop last year of zinnias from Dollar Tree. So that's why I got these. I got two kinds. I got this semi dwarf and um, giants of California. So I'm trying a mini one and a giant one. Um, these are red cord chantonay um, carrots. I had a different one on my list, but I might slash one of them since I got this one. These were on my secondary list, habaneros, but I slashed them, but I found them here. So we'll see how those do. I can't remember if these are on my secondary list or not, but so I want to like grow these and then dry them to make my own cayenne pepper like powder. Cosmos were on my flower list, so I don't have to buy that from anywhere else. Um, sugar snap peas. Now I had, I think it was Snowbird from Burpee on my list, but I don't think those were heirlooms. So this is actually an heirloom variety of sugar snap peas. So I'll just, I'll slash that one and I already got it. Lavender was on my secondary list. And so I decided to get it here. Herbs are for me are really hard to grow from seeds. So we'll see how I do with that. Um, basil, Genevieve, Genevieve's basil has also been on my list. So got that. Uh, marigold was on my flower list, or actually it was my secondary and I slashed it, but I decided to get it. And then I just love morning glories. So I decided to get these as well. I'm super excited that I'm, I'm getting started on seed buying. Okay, you guys, so it's the next day and I am finished, I think. <laughs> I'm officially finished with seed buying. I just placed an order to Burpee and to True Leaf Market. So those are my two like main people I'm buying from this year in addition to Dollar Tree. <laughs> but those should be here within the next week or two. And so when they come in, then I will film another segment for this video to show you guys what I got. But right now, I wanted to show you my organizational thing going on right now with my seats. So here's the state of things. So here's everything that I bought in my bedroom right now. The kids are sleeping, finally. Um, both of them, Max was up forever in his room. Anyway, here's my little, um, markers, but this is what, this is my, I got this from Dollar Tree a little while ago and I'm clearly outgrowing it already. So that's why I got these two shoe boxes. So one is going to be for veggies and then ooh, the other one is going to be for herbs and flowers because you know I just don't have as many of those so super important to keep your seeds organized and to know what you have in inventory because unless you have unlimited funds which chances are if you're watching this video or following my channel you don't have unlimited funds you're like me where you have to live on a budget it's really important to know what you have and to know if they're how old they are and stuff like that so that you're not buying duplicates and so on. Also, you guys, anyone want a giant sequoia? <laughs> I don't know. I We bought this. Where were we? Was it Yosemite? No. I think it was wherever we went on a steam powered train ride through the Redwoods last year in California when we lived there. And in case you guys are new, we used to live in California with the military for 18 months and now we're in Kansas. But anyway, I don't know. I mean, we never live anywhere long enough for this to even like do anything. So it's kind of a pipe dream. This is what this, these, okay. This is my cover crops, which I didn't really do much with this year, but maybe next year after I am more prepared. So here's what I have prior to buying from uh, Dollar Tree. So I kind of have them organized. I put the flowers and herbs in the front. So we got, this is just regular sweet basil, cilantro, sorry. Come on, focus. I'm going to hold it like this. You got dill, lemon balm, oregano, which I'm almost out. So I got more of that. Uh, parsley. I got plenty of parsley of like this, this one too rosemary sorry ah. 
excuse my super dry hands <laughs> anyone else get like that Oof, I hate it and I like I'm just I'm too lazy to put lotion on <laughs> garden sage thyme calendula this is one of my goals for this year is to grow a lot of calendula and I also I also ordered more there's not many in here and learn how to render render tallow and make my own calendula salve with tallow I'm super excited about that I got a couple nasturtiums these are new packets haven't used them yet here's a pollinator mix which will be great when we get our bees a sunflower two, like two types of sunflower there zinnia which oh oops well you know what these these didn't do super great last year so I don't know maybe I didn't do something right I don't want to blame the seed companies it's probably me <laughs> let's see we got arugula two types of broccoli two types of cabbage which my dream with this is to make sauerkraut make our own sauerkraut and also like have them in storage napa cabbage which is like a chinese cabbage cauliflower two types of kale two types of lettuce this one is more like a head lettuce it turned out really nice this past fall two types of radishes so this is a radish mix and a white icicle mix I did order the watermelon radish, which I'm super excited about, and I might not even plant these because I'm the only one in our household that eats radishes. We'll see how that works out. Spinach, a bush bean, and I ordered pole beans, a couple kinds. Now that is, yeah, that's the same one, just a different packet. One type of carrot, I ordered more carrots, cucumber, two types of cucumber. This patty pan squash, or also known as scallop squash, I'm not going to plant this this year because they grew well. That was not the issue, but I just wasn't into eating them. They're not my favorite type of squash. I'd rather have butternut or spaghetti or zucchini or the yellow squash like that. So I'm not going to plant these this year. Two types of zucchini, but I'm almost out of those. So I got a hybrid and an heirloom type. These are totally new. I haven't planted these yet. These are Amish paste. Where did I get these? Oh, I ordered these from Azure Standard. And then this is San Marzano tomato from Tree Leaf Market. This is their packaging. Uh, oh yeah, see, look, high, high germination rate. That's what we want. And then two types of winter squash. We got spaghetti squash and butternut. And then I seed saved, or really my dad seed saved for me because he grew these. And these are dried okra. So that's all you have to do for seed saving. Sometimes it can be a little complicated and I really actually haven't done it myself, but I want to. This, that's one reason why I really like heirloom is because, especially in hard times, you can just collect seeds from your plants and then you have seeds and you don't have to buy them and it's actually money saving in the long run. Plus, I have found that heirloom seeds tend to be cheaper than hybrids. But there's seeds in there, so I'll also plant okra. Those do really well in hot weather. Okay, everyone, so it's been a few days later, actually maybe it's close to a week later, from when I filmed that last segment showing you my Dollar Tree seeds. Mama. So now, Mama. yes bud, you wanna come over here and be in the video? So now we're going to go over one of the mail order seed packages that I got. So I'm waiting on one more shipment okay. and then this video will be complete. So this, this is being filmed in several different segments. Oh, I'm having my helper come over. Hold on. He's gonna be in the video. Okay. There we go. Oops. Here, let me adjust it just a little bit. Okay. There, now we're both in it. And sorry about the glare of my glasses, the challenges of YouTubing with glasses. Okay, so this package, I'm not gonna show the other side because I don't wanna put my address out there, is from, hey, don't touch that, please. This is from True Leaf Market, and this is the first time I've bought a bunch of seeds. Max, do you wanna be in the video? No. No? This is the first time I've bought a bunch of seeds from them. <laughs> And I'm really excited to try out their seeds. Mom. Max, you can't go that way. You gotta go the other way. Like that. Okay. Okay. So, let's just get all the seeds out. I already opened this, but okay. here's all the seeds that I bought from them. And I, maybe I went a little bit crazy 
but I'm, I'm just really excited about my garden this year. So let's just go through in no particular order each seed packet that I got. So we have Danvers 126 carat. Then we have, oh, how is this pronounced? Kyoga, or Kyoja. It's C-H-I-O-G-G-I-A. I'll put it on the screen. I was saying Kyoga, Kyogia, whatever, but Kyoja beet. I'm not a huge fan of beets, but these are the really pretty ones that have, they kind of, they kind of look like the rings of a tree and it's purple, like pinkish, pink, pinkish purple and white rings. So I thought I'm just gonna plant one type of beet since I'm not a huge beet fan, but I think those would be fun. Calendula Pacific Beauty Mixture. So I guess there's different types of calendula and I want, I have another type of calendula, but I wanted to try this one. Mortgage Lifter Tomato, and this is a legendary tomato by cross between the German Johnson beef steak, English and Italian tomato varieties. It's indeterminate and it's not a paste tomato, so it's like a slicer. Then we have Iceberg Crisp Head Lettuce, which I think we're all pretty familiar with, with Iceberg. I don't eat a ton of Iceberg lettuce, but sometimes you just want Iceberg. I don't know why, but it's different than your leaf lettuce, romaine, or the baby leaf lettuce. So this will be something different. Thai basil. So I've grown regular basil, sweet basil but I don't have any Thai basil, and Thai basil has a little bit of a different flavor, and obviously it's used in Thai dishes, and I really like Thai and Asian no. recipes. No. Then we have the Cinderella pumpkin. This is also known by another name, but it's French, and I don't know how to say it, no. so I won't say it. No. Max, you gotta be quiet. Shh. Mm. What do you want? And this is one of those, it's like the Cinderella pumpkin where it's a little bit flatter and more elongated. And this says uh, the, each one weighs 25 to 35 pounds. And these are just really pretty and this will have a dual purpose of being both edible, so it'll be able to be cooked. That was a very long. I'll be able to cook it to no. make pies and such, no, no, but then no, no. it will also make a really pretty decor for our fall porch. Then we have giant noble spinach, and I don't know how well these are showing up here, but these are giant leaves, heirloom spinach. I also have Bloomsdale long standing spinach. Then we have watermelon radish, which again, I, I'm the only one in the house that eats radishes, and I had way too many radishes last season so i'm not going to plant a bunch of radishes again but watermelon radishes are again very pretty like the kyoja beets and it they're purpley and larger so so neat and i i think they're really good pickled too so i might try that then we have kentucky blue bull uh pole bean kentucky blue pole bean hard to say that it is has the, all the best traits from both Blue Lake and Kentucky Wonder. So I did want to get blue, yeah, the Blue Lake pole bean because I have the Blue Lake bush bean, but they were sold out of the Blue Lake pole. So I thought I'm going to try the Kentucky blue, and I don't have this is the only pole bean that I have, and then they have the bush bean. Then we have poblano Mama. ancho pepper. Mama. So yes. Poblanos are those, Mama. typically in the store they're sold as those green Mama. peppers. Yes. I'll play with that. You can play with that. You can color on that actually. Just playing with post-its. But basically poblanos are those green peppers that are a little bit hot, but they're not like a jalapeno. And it says, yeah, you can dry it to make ancho chili powder and I, use ancho a lot in Mexican cooking. Then we have the Marconi red pepper, which is a sweet bell pepper, but they're um, red obviously, and longer, not the more like bulky shapes, like your typical sweet pepper, so it's a longer Italian variety. My battery died, so I had to change that. 
but I think I got everything I was saying about the Marconi red pepper. Then we have another tomato, Gardener's Delight tomato, and there's actually no information on here about it, but again, I think it's a slicing tomato, it's not a paste. But I really do want to focus on the canning tomatoes, like the paste type tomatoes, because that's how we eat most of our tomato products is in canned stuff. Then we have a Costata Romanesco zucchini squash. And zucchinis have done super well here this past summer in Kansas. And this is again, I think, actually I think all of these are heirlooms. I don't think any of these are hybrids. So yeah, this is um, another, I can't remember if this is striped or not, but. Oh, you want that light on? Here. Okay. Then we have spearmint. So in the mint family, and it's also known as garden mint or common mint. I have a lemon mint, so a mint that's gonna be more lemony flavored. Also, I have lemon balm. So I wanted to have like an actual minty spearmint. This will be great for tea. And actually, a friend on Instagram told me that spearmint tea with milk or cream, I think she, maybe she said milk, but some kind of dairy in there, is actually really good and I never would have thought to put milk or cream with a mint tea but she said it's just so good so I really really want to try that when I get my harvest spearmint then we have another pumpkin sugar pie pumpkin so this is more your typical pie pumpkins they're smaller they don't take as long as the Cinderella pumpkin it does say round is somewhat flattened but it says um, yeah great for pies and canning and then the last, oh, this is my last one. This is the only one, well, there are a couple with fancier packages, but this one is from the Kitazawa Seed Company. But I guess they have like a partnership with True Leaf Market or they carry their seeds. And it, I got a, a handout in my package. It says your source for Asian vegetable seeds. And so I guess I didn't realize that the Lufa gourd is an Asian seed, it's an Asian product. Did it turn off? You gotta push it. So this is the loofah and I am so excited about this. So it's also known as a sponge gourd or dishcloth gourd. They are edible, but I'm not growing them. I might try a one or two to see what they taste like, but my primary reason for growing loofah is to make her own bath sponges. And I guess you could even use them for dishes too. But you basically let them dry on the vine. Yeah, let, allow them to hang there and dry and you can make them into sponges. And I'm super excited because basically we're going to be growing our own sponges and also making our own soap and lotion from the tallow that's in the freezer. I need to render it, I need to learn how to render fat so that I can make soap and lotion, and then we'll have homegrown sponges, which is just so funny to say. We're gonna be self-sustaining with body products. So isn't that exciting? So if you don't have yourself some Lufa sponge seeds, go get them from the Kitazawa Seed Company through True Leaf Market. All right, so that is my True Leaf Market seed haul. The only, I'm just waiting to receive my package from the Burpee Seed Company, and that should be here within the next week or so. So I will come back and film that segment, and then that will be it for my seed haul. If I do buy any one-off seeds here and there, I will be sure to, sh sure to show that to you guys. So the next segment will be my Burpee Seeds. All right, everyone, it is the next day, I think, or two days after that last segment, anyway. Uh, I am here with the final segment of my seed haul video because my package from Burpee Seeds just arrived today. And I have my little helper here. It's 10 o'clock at night and he's up way past when he usually is, but he took a really late nap. Yeah. So let's open this up. So I don't know why this one was separate from the rest of them in this package, but so this, Max is kind of playing with the package, so it's a little bit wrinkly, but these are Scarlet Runner pole beans. And I think in the last segment, I said that I was only planting two types of beans and I forgot about the Scarlet Runners. So these are ornamental and edible. So they have 
like the name says, scarlet red flowers on the vines. My plan with the scarlet runner beans is to make an arch trellis. I've seen people do this on YouTube and they're so gorgeous. So these will be for eating, obviously, but also making the garden a little prettier. Yeah. Oh, wow. What are you telling them? All right, so let's go through these in no particular order. This is just how they package them. So we've got some Greek oregano. Love some oregano, like using it fresh, but then I also have it dry in my spice drawer, so that is a must. We have it. Armenian cucumber. This is an heirloom seed. Not all of these are heirlooms. I did get some hybrids, so I'll show you those. Uh, but these are, I think actually my dad told me that Armenian cucumbers are actually part of the melon family, but they look like cucumbers. And they're ribbed and they grow on the outside and they grow kind of long and they're light green. So these will be a different one. Those are, they're really, really yummy for slicing, putting a little bit of salt on the slices and just eating it, so yummy. Then here is the Sure Thing Hybrid Summer Squash. So this is one of the hybrids. And what does it say? Um, so it's a summer squash, but it says it will produce even in cool, cloudy conditions. And also you don't need bees or male flowers to pollinate these in order to create the fruit. So this is something that uh, it was probably bred to be like that as a hybrid. And that's a benefit to getting hybrid seeds is because they're bred to do certain things. All right, then we have Tall Utah 52-70R Improved Celery. <laughs> so I'm growing celery this year. I'm super excited. Uh-oh. There you go. Um, I use celery a lot as a substitute for onions because I am intolerant to onions. They give me really, really bad gas as well as garlic. And so celery is definitely not the same thing as onions, but I like to saute it when, whenever a recipe would call for onions to be sauteed, just to give that little bit of aromatic flavor. Again, it's not anywhere near the same as onions, but this is what I do because I just can't have them right now. Then we have the small sugar pumpkin. This is an heirloom variety. And like I said, I filmed that segment a couple days ago. I think I also got a small pie pumpkin <laughs> variety from True Leaf Market. And I, yeah, I think this is the only seed that I actually got, accidentally got two of, but I don't think it's the exact same one. I'll have to check, but. <laughs> Uh, we can kind of grow them side by side and see which one does better. Then we have black tailed mountain watermelon. And this again is an heirloom seed. I don't really eat watermelon. It kind of messes with my stomach, kind of makes it feel kind of icky, but my husband loves watermelon. That's one of the only fruits that he eats. And so I'm growing this for Mark and I think Max also eats it too and maybe he will like it because in this, by the summer he'll be eating a lot of solids. So uh, the, yeah, the watermelon is for my husband. Then we have Rutgers tomato, which is another heirloom tomato. And these are glo globular, they're indeterminate. So I think I read where they, I don't know if they're good for canning or not, but it's a round tomato. Then we have a honey plus hybrid cucumber. So another hybrid. And this one, I think it's, oh, pale green to white is the color of it. So this will be quite different from your new, your normal cucumber. Like I have a couple of pickling cucumber seeds already. So this will be different. Then we have a 4th of July hybrid tomato and the name comes from the fact that you should be able to harvest it by the 4th of July, which I guess is a little bit early for tomatoes. So that's why I got this particular hybrid. And then we got the California Wonder Sweet Pepper Heirloom. And I did grow this. I had one California Wonder plant that my dad started for me. So I didn't have any actual seeds myself. 
uh, and this is from the late 1920s. So that's a cool historical fact with it being an heirloom. So that is it. That is all my seeds or that that's all my seeds <laughs> for this year, unless I see some seeds that I just can't pass up. That's it. So I hope that was really fun and gave you some inspiration. I'm going to, I'm, doing a quick turnaround for this video so I can get it out while it's still January and so it's still not too late to order your seeds. So I hope this video gave you some inspiration on what to put in your garden this year. Maybe you learned about some new varieties and you want to get those for your garden. Or maybe you're getting some different things for your garden. I really would love to hear down in the comments below what you are most excited about planning this year because right now it's still winter we can't plant anything unless maybe you know you live in California or a really warm climate but for the majority of the United States it's still January and we still can't plant anything so leave your comments down below on what you're most excited to plant this year and let's make a conversation about seeds and where you're getting your seeds from as well Again, I'm getting mine from Tree Leaf Market, or I got mine from Tree Leaf Market, Burpee, and the Dollar Tree. If you are new around here, make sure to hit the red subscribe button down below to join the Black Rifle Homestead community. I would love to have you here along with me as we go on this gardening and homesteading journey together. Wherever you are in the country or the world, uh, welcome to our homestead. So in the meantime, I think it's Time to start winding down for bed and relaxing. What do you think, buddy? You gonna say bye-bye? All right, you guys, take care and I will see you in the next video. Look, he is the perfect helper with his farmer pajamas on. He has little tractors. You have little tractors on your PJs. So cute. Gus the farmer. You just want to crawl so bad. Mm -hmm.